Welcome to Things You Don't Know Short History Facts. In this episode, we will look briefly at some of the major holidays and how they are celebrated around the world. There are too many holidays to cover in one podcast, so we will focus on Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, and Independence Day. Now, you're going to think, oh, you know, all of these holidays are not celebrated everywhere, and that's true. But these holidays have wider celebrations than you might think. Christmas is probably the one celebrated most. Of course, it's a religious holiday celebrating the birth of Jesus. But the date of it is based on the old Roman Saturnalia, which took place around the winter solstice toward the end of December. What was the Saturnalia? Can you say a few words about that? Certainly. The Saturnalia was sort of like a carnival or a Mardi Gras, a time when all the societal rules went by the wayside for weeks. Servants were taken care of by masters. Women made the decisions in patriarchal households. And everybody just had this huge party in honor of Saturn, the Roman god uh, associated with the Greek god Kronos, who uh, had created the world but got tired of running it, so turned it all over to his sons, Jupiter, Pluto, and Mercury. So, getting back to Christmas. Yes, it's been certainly um, commercialized and become a source of national pride in many Eastern European nations that had formerly been behind the Iron Curtain. The Armenian people, for example, celebrate in January during the Epiphany. They have um, family meals, trout, raisin dessert dish, commemorating the uh, Three Kings. The Russians have re-embraced their Eastern Orthodox heritage since the collapse of communism, and they have um, a Santa Claus character called Grandfather Frost and his daughter, the Snow Maiden, who go around and help children and generally bring joy to the world. Now in Australia and New Zealand, because of the season reversals, it's in summertime. So they celebrate with swimming pools and barbecues. Um, their decoration object is a holiday bush that turns red by the end of that period. Here's something that I know you know something about, Dr. Weaver, that happens in our own USA, the pageant of peace. The pageant of peace is held on the mall. There's a stage that's set up, and, and every state and territory has a tree they display there, and they typically have someone from that state or territory to stand there and explain uh, various customs that are particular to that state or territory. Trees are all lit up and decorated, and of course the national tree, which everybody seems to know about, is also lit there and as i say they have a stage where there's various performers uh coming and it's really a, a nice ad mixture because they have uh, well-known uh, famous uh, performers as well as not so well-known beautiful and it's very interesting and speaking of things that different people do in different spots in in switzerland they have a tradition which is somewhat akin to what the uh, Scandinavian countries have uh, in their Krampus, which I'll explain in a moment. But in Switzerland, they have St. Nick, who comes along in a sled and picks up children who have been misbehaving and puts them in a sack and takes them away and talks to them actually met someone who had that happen to him as a child. Of course, the parents know all about it, and the, the kid is returned, etc. Uh, but this guy said that it just shocked him terribly and changed his life around uh, quite a bit. The so, world match? Yeah, it was really interesting. And, and, and I mentioned Krampus. Well, Krampus is, well... If you look at the pictures of Krampus, he's sort of a demonic, almost, sort of creature. Scary, uh, even to look at. It's a scary image. 
and uh, Krampus does the same thing, except there's more of a hint of uh, violence and uh, uh, negative uh, with that. One of the other uh, celebrations, which is just so amazingly different, uh, is uh, in Japan. Well, what's different about it? Well, they have a tradition that on Christmas Eve, they order KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Really? Uh, yeah. And, uh, you, you know, the this tradition has become so widespread since it started in uh, 1974 that uh, in order to m ensure that you get your order of uh, KFC, people are ordering it six months in advance. Yes, I... I heard that that started because a gentleman who happened to be one of their regional managers dressed up as Santa Claus for some sick children in the hospital and decided to bring a meal along for the family. A lot of American customs are exported all around the world for various reasons. But eating Kentucky Fried Chicken for Christmas has got to be one of the most unusual uh, exports that we have. I think. A friend of mine told me that even the emperor does it. Wow. At any rate, all of these countries have, you know, various ways of celebrating Christmas. Another holiday that that really started uh, in the United States, we all know about the pilgrims and celebrating Thanksgiving and all of that stuff, right? Yes, but it's done for different reasons in different countries as well as at different times. For example, in Grenada, it's celebrated in October, and it celebrates the return of democratic government over there in the 80s. In uh -huh. Canada, it's a harvest festival on a, a Monday in October. And in Liberia, there are actually two separate dates. The descendants of freed slaves, the Amerigo Liberians, celebrate in November, and the indigenous people celebrate in August. I'm not sure why. In in the Ukraine. Now this this really is interesting to me. They celebrate Thanksgiving. And what do they do? Uh well, particularly since the the Ukraine has uh, become more distant from Russia. I think at first it was it was a kind of uh, thumbing their nose at Russia and and then they kind of got into the whole spirit of it being sort of a harvest sort of thing, harvest celebration. But more and more, they are taking to emulating um, the traditional Thanksgiving foods like turkey and uh, pumpkins and that sort of thing. And, and there's quite a market for uh, American recipes for pumpkin pie and turkey and all of those sorts of things. It's interesting. Another holiday, um, Halloween, has been exported also um, in an, an amazing ways. I know they they celebrate it in England, but interestingly enough, they also celebrate it in a lot of other countries, such as the Ukraine. They do that, and I know that the tradition of children uh, dressing in costumes and going out trick or treat. Uh, is rather interesting. Uh, it comes from the medi medieval souling rituals. Maybe you could say something about that. Yes. The uh, date, of course, is right before the Catholic Festival of All Saints Day. And then the day after that is called All Souls Day, commemorating souls that are still in purgatory. So people would go out and offer to say prayers and do things to liberate souls from purgatory in exchange for treats. Ah, okay. You know, and, you know, one of the things that's very much associated with Halloween is pumpkins. It's carving pumpkins was originally done, I guess it was an Irish tradition, where they carved turnips and then they moved to carving pumpkins because they're easier to carve. Um... But uh, making scary faces on the pumpkins was done to keep evil spirits uh, away. Now, today, they have the weirdest kind of thing. They have these competitions in various places. Um, 
uh, so, a lot of parts in Kentucky and um, some other places, uh, Alabama, uh, they have pumpkin throwing contests. I wouldn't want to have to clean up the mess. Oh, it is terribly messy. Uh, but yeah, they they do these things. It's now also grown so that in some other parts of the country, it's not so much people throwing as they catapult these uh, pumpkins. <laughs> see how that, who, who can do it first. That I would like to see. Well, you know, um, that actually was shown on Mythbusters, if you remember that uh, particular uh, TV show. Uh, they actually did a whole thing on the pumpkin throwing and pumpkin tossing and pumpkin shooting. And yeah, it was actually fairly interesting. So at any rate, there are some other um, things that we wanted to talk about, like uh, Guy Fawkes Day. Oh, yes, yes. That's a Halloween-like festival in England uh, that comes out of the remembrance of the attempt on November the 5th by Guy Fawkes to blow up Parliament and establish a Catholic theocracy in the UK. That's why effigies of both he and the Pope were often burned by many for many years. But it's a, um, a celebration day. Children get coins and candy, what's called a penny for the guy. There's also um, the Day of the Dead. There's Muertes in Mexico, where people remember their departed relatives and ancestors. And so by dressing up and even picnicking near grave sites. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, and as you, as we've pointed out, very, it's highly varied too. Um, I guess the last one that we wanted to kind of take a quick look at is Independence Days, because most countries do have some sort of a celebration uh, where they mark their independence or the start of their country. Uh, for example, in Canada, it was formerly known as Dominion Day. It's now called Canada Day, and they celebrate that on July the 1st. Interesting that it's so close to July the 4th, isn't it? Yes, that has led to a really interesting tradition. Um, the city of Windsor in Ontario is literally about only 20 minutes from downtown Detroit, Michigan. And they have a thing called the Freedom Festival. It's fireworks and music and swimming and a whole bunch of entertainment. And it jointly celebrates Canada Day and Independence Day. So the American city of Detroit and the Canadian city of Windsor kind of did this thing. And it's continuing on to this day, uh, celebrating both Independence uh, Days. I guess uh, in Finland, Independence Day is... Uh, Celebrated on November the 7th, commemorating uh, the victory of the Whites in the Russian Civil War. Oh, yes, that, that's very interesting. There's some um, national prayers from all denominations. Um, there's a remembrance of the life of Field Marshal Mannerheim, the great leader of Finnish democracy, who we are going to create a profile of later. But um, he did a lot to rescue Jewish people during World War II, despite being a German ally. So there's a, a lot of films and, and remembrances of his life. And then in Israel on May the 14th, there's a whole week-long celebration there. Um, Orthodox Jewish women do a purification, bathing in a mikvah. They have parties and barbecues. They take particular effort to recognize Christians, Muslims, and Jewish people and for their contributions to the Israeli state. Now, Greece, uh, their independence day is in March and 25th, and they do a whole really carnival atmosphere for about a week. Wow. Orthodox monks dress up like clowns and entertain children. The ecumenical patriarch, head of the Orthodox Church, climbs Mount Athos and gives a blessing. All income taxes are suspended for at least two weeks after the Independence Day. So if you're behind in your taxes, you file during those two weeks and you literally don't have to pay them. Well, I think that about does it for what we wanted to do. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you did, uh, give us a like and uh, subscribe. That would be great. We do have uh, uh, many more episodes coming your way. So enjoy. Have a nice evening, friends.